Section 4.7 is titled Indirect Argument, Two Classical Theorems. So in this section, we're going to basically prove two major theorems. We're going to prove that square root of 2 is irrational and that there are infinitely many prime numbers. And both of these theorems or proofs were known to ancient Greek mathematicians. I really like the theorem and the proof for square root of 2 is irrational. This is one of my favorite ones in this class. So I hope you pay attention and you're most likely going to do something similar to that on the homework or quizzes or even the tests. So let's begin with square root of 2. In order to prove that square root of 2 is irrational, we need to recall the theorem that we discussed in the previous section that was called theorem 4.6.4. I called it a proposition or a theorem at the time, but it basically says, if you have n as an integer, then if you knew that n squared is even, then n itself will be known as an even number too. So how can we use that to prove that square root of two is irrational? By the way, this is theorem 4.7.1 in your book, and it's definitely a true statement. And like I said, it's about 2,000 years old, this argument that we're about to make. Of course, ancient Greek mathematicians did not have the tools that we have, so they didn't do the problem with algebra, but they did it with geometry, and it can be proven with geometry. It's literally the same proof that I'm about to present, how square root of 2 is irrational. Keep in mind that this statement is not an if-then statement, so I cannot do a proof by contrapositive here. So what I have to do is prove this with the proof by contradiction. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to suppose not, meaning I'm going to suppose for the sake of contradiction that square root of 2 is rational. Now what does it mean to say that something is rational? It literally means that there are integers a and b where the second integer is not equal to 0 such that the square root of 2 is equal to a over b. So by definition, it is a fraction, so that means it can be written as a fraction. And we're going to show that this will lead to a problem later on. Now, for this fraction, I'm going to suppose that it's already in lowest terms. So I'm going to suppose that somebody already took the a and b and divided out the like terms. So like, for example, if it was 6 over 24, for instance, I'm going to suppose that somebody divided the 6 out and wrote it as 1 over 3. This is perfectly fine, and I can make that assumption, because if the a and b were not in lowest terms, I can rewrite the problem as c over d, where somebody simplified the expression and turned it into c and d. So I'm going to already suppose that I already have the lowest form of the fraction. And this is important because that's where the contradiction is going to happen later on in the future. So again, as a reminder, we reduced the fraction a over b to lowest terms. In other terms, a and b have nothing in common. So that's something to keep in mind for the future. Now, recall that square root of 2 is a over b, which means I can square both sides. It's not an issue. We can multiply both sides by itself, and it's still going to be equal. And by the rules of exponents, we can take out the radical with the 2 in the power, on the left side. And then with algebra fractions, we can square the a and square the b to have a squared over b squared. Which means I can cross multiply this point since 2 is technically 2 over 1 and we have a squared over b squared. We can cross multiply the corners to turn the expression into 2b squared equals to a squared. But keep in mind that b squared is an integer since b itself was an integer. So b times b, which is b squared, is still going to be an integer. But what does this mean? This means that 2 is a factor of a squared, meaning a squared is even. Well, by the theorem or the proposition 4.6.4, it will follow that a is also even. But if a is even, then a is going to be equal to 2k. This is straight up by the definition of the word even, where k is an integer. So we can take this result and substitute it in the last line on the previous slide. 2b squared equals to a squared. And when we do that, when we replace a 
with 2k, we're going to get 2b squared equals 2k to the power of 2. Again, using the rules of exponents, we can foil or distribute or square, whatever you want to call it, to get 2b squared equals to 4k squared, which means that b squared is going to be equal to 2k squared. But keep in mind, k is an integer, so k squared is an integer, which means b squared is a multiple of 2. In other terms, b squared is even. Okay, so if b squared is even, that makes b itself even by the same proposition that we used previously. So at this point in time, what we're saying is that a is even and b is also even. Well, that means that they have to have a common factor. At least the number 2 is common because they're both even. Remember, b squared is even, so that means b is even. a squared is even, so that means a is even. And so a is basically 2k and b is technically going to be some sort of 2t, for example. So they both have a 2 at least that is common. But this is a contradiction because we had assumed that a and b have nothing in common. So how could they still have a 2? Remember the fraction was supposedly reduced to lowest terms. So there were no common factors. And all of a sudden we're discovering that 2 is a common factor. That is the contradiction. Which means that our assumption that square root of 2 is irrational must be false because it's leading to contra contradiction. So that means the statement of the theorem is in fact true. And we can finally claim that square root of 2 is irrational. So it's kind of an interesting theorem. And the same proof pretty much works if you replace 2 with a prime number. The only difference is your proposition has to be modified, but everything else pretty much stays the same if you replace 2 with, for example, 3 or 5 or 7. Your propositions would be slightly different, your common factor would be different, but the rest of the proof, the skeleton of the proof, stays the same.